All right, so we've got a walk-in freezer here that's not working right. And it's always a great sign when you get here and the cover's off of it. They said the compressor's not running, which is very specific. Hopefully it's just the maintenance guy took a peek. So let's go up and take our own peek and see what's going on. Well, it don't look too bad. Looks like they got a digital thermostat in there because they got a sensor bulb. So let's see what we got going on here. All right, so I'm corrected here. It's a walk-in cooler, not the walk-in freezer. Even though it's got a little package blower evaporator on top of the cooler where usually the compressor's at. This one here has been remotely put over here. So, compressor is not hot. Fan motor is not hot. Curious George says push the button. Curious George is wrong. It's not it. Looks like that goes to that one. Yes. We have 244 million volts across that thing. Tight as tight can be. Good chance that thermostat could possibly be causing the solenoid if it's got one, which I think it does, to shut down. Yeah, we're we're about 5, 10, 15, 15 pounds is where we're at. So our solenoid must be not opening up, is what I'm gonna assume. Alright, so not really sure how that's supposed to work with just two wires going to it, so I'm assuming this don't work anymore. Found the solenoid there. junction box there it's kind of a little tight on the ceiling here as you can see you literally cannot really get into anything you get to really go down through the ceiling tile to get to it assume it's a neutral, it's white. I have nothing. So, I guess we can crawl back over there and see what we got going on back in this back corner. So, white, one of many blacks. No, just one black. Well, 
wonder what that red wire there goes to. It's practically pulled right out of the socket. That does not look right. I need to find the breaker for this thing so I can actually investigate it. Yeah, that, that don't do you no good, does it? I'd say that might have something to do with it. According to this, it's your AC input, output. Common sense tells you that it shouldn't uh, be unplugged like that. And they stretch these wires so flipping tight. You can see they on this looks really new too, which kind of sucks. And it pulled out. That one's a little loose. That one's loose. So we probably got that right. I'm gonna see if that does scan in. Look at that plastic and I don't even snap it. That's the real finger control. Alright, it's just for giggles. Let's see what the this comes up with. Right, is it the page? Sure, let's do it. Okay, it looks like that's normally open, normally closed, and they put an L in front of it. It should be on the normally open. I wonder if that came undone and fell over to it. Now let's fix that. That probably is not gonna help us none. Okay, I just heard it kick on. So it must have worked. Kind of look at some of these other settings here they got so I can kind of figure out what they are. So they want it off at 33 and on at 38. So there really ain't much to set in this thing. I need to call our maintenance guy and find out what, how long we've had this, if this is just something they started or, or what. And lo and behold, it's working. Suction pressure's holding pretty steady there. Cooler 61 degrees. And we're flashing. So we're gonna watch it run for a little bit. It just kicked on. So we're gonna let it run for a bit, see how that goes. May have to add a little to it. Okay, so we got her all set up to go. I'm about 240 for our head, and we're still flashing pretty good down there. Okay, so we added a little extra for the winter charge and pumping it down. We're going to see where our receiver's at. Also going to make sure this thing shuts off at a uh, positive pressure and that it's able to do it. So we're kind of killing two birds at one stone here. Good. Just staying in the happy zone windier and snot up here so chances of finding it if it's outside here slim to none but I'm kind of curious if it ain't around this uh, pressure switch here because we got kinds of oil on it all right twice I've gotten a little something out of this trying to leave it on the cover so well, I was trying to leave the cover on there so that maybe it would help accumulate it a little bit I mean our primary issue here and the original reason for this call is because that loose wire fell out of the thermostat All right, so we warmed it up a touch. You can see we're kind of cooler at the bottom there, and all of a sudden, boom, it jumps up to 133 about right in that ballpark there. So we should be able to add a little bit more to it just to be safe. Okay, so we added a little bit more to it. You can see it's come up, and right about there, it starts to change. Jumps up quite a bit in that area there. So... Somewhere between here and there is where we're at. So 
it's a little over half 60 percent 70 percent somewhere in that ballpark so we should be good there now I'll go ahead and scan the inside real quick trust me nice to see what I'm doing I, I have yet to figure out why they like to wire the flipping fans with the lights it's you know when I when I did my house I actually wired the outlets separate from the lights so if you wanted to do work on the outlets you'd still have lights to work but for some reason out of all the stupid ass codes they come up with that's not one of their codes all right, you got to remember this thing here has been running and I shut it off so that it would trap some of the refrigerant in the coil, but for the most part, this thing's only running at about 30 pounds of pressure, maybe something like that. So we don't have a lot of static pressure on this thing. Let's see if we can get uh, Sometimes it does better on the, the original normal mode, honestly. <sighs> that coil is so ate up. Everybody tries to get 600 years out of stuff. Say it's at top of that TXV's head. Yep. So I'm pretty confident that uh, it's not leaking. We, at least with this amount of amount of pressure on it so well I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap this one up if they want to go further with it and do a full blow and leak check we can do that we uh, could isolate it and then pump it up but that's gonna be a lot more money and time and generally the cost of refrigerants a whole lot cheaper depending on how often they have to do it oh boy if you only had all the story sometimes so I talked to the maintenance guy, and we bypassed this because we're having random shutoffs. And that seemed like that just changed pitch. So anyhow, he just changed this thing on Monday, and they were having problems before he changed that. So now we have a new set of issues. So we don't know if this was an issue, so we, it was already bypassed to try to eliminate it. So now we've got this thing here, which like I said, they were having issues before they changed this. So who knows, this is great. I mean, if you would have just been given this information in advance, you would have looked for other things besides the obvious thing that you found. But like I said, we found it low on charge and we looked things over and it's uh, about all you can do for right now. But it does sound like those fans changed pitch. Hard to say. We're, we're 37 degrees and dropping. We're gonna leave this bypass. He's gonna rehook it up if uh, if he doesn't have any issues, and then see if that acts up after he rehooks it. So, if you guys like the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to click that notification bell. Till next time, guys. We will catch you on the next one.